Uh, Principal Director of Music, Lieutenant Colonel Jace Bircham, in his last year, who is retired. <laughs> 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 Yes, having a good Yes, probably some words actually. <laughs> 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 to bring one in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's highly inappropriate, but it seems to go down well. <laughs> <laughs> we still do it. <laughs> 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 what else? I just think. Michael Bowmaster. Are you? Are you? Gradually come to the end as well. This is my final, my bad and I'm retired pretty much set up. As uh, kind of Jay said. But have you been helping to run and organise this for the last. So I'm the producer, the yeah. So for the last four years I've produced the show. Um, so yeah. And it's still just as popular. Oh, it's fantastic. It's it's you're here for a good night. No, I'm so glad. <laughs> Not my bad would have been so pleased today, it was kept going yeah. still. Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the 2023 Mountbatten Festival of Music.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Katie Derham, and what a pleasure it is to be back here with you, here in the glorious Royal Albert Hall, packed to the rafters. My goodness, you are all here. Going to have a wonderful evening, I know. We have got all sorts of different musical genres. We've got some very special guests. We've got some exquisite solos as well. And performing for you this evening, I have behind me the Royal Marines Band's Portsmouth, Commando Training Centre Royal Marines and Collingwood, I give you, ladies and gentlemen, the mass bands of His Majesty's Royal Marines. Opening tonight's concert was Lieutenant Colonel Jay Spurcham, the Principal Director of Music Royal Marines. You will be seeing much more of him as the evening progresses. Now, the opening fanfare, which is called The King, Our Captain General, was composed by the Corps Bandmaster, Warrant Officer Class 1, Ivan Hutchinson, to celebrate His Majesty... Hello, the Hutchinsons. <laughs> ..to celebrate His Majesty King Charles III's appointment as the ceremonial head of the Royal Marines. Well, speaking of ceremonial, we're going to continue now with the uh, world-renowned Corps of Drums, along with some special guests. They have a new work composed by Band Corporal Aaron Pittman that celebrates the Royal Marine Band's profile and commitment to Britain. The Corps of Drums march on to National Asset before performing High Grove, which is the drum static that draws inspiration from the diversity of percussion rhythms found all across the Commonwealth. Then recognising the 50th anniversary of the Royal Marines' affiliation with the Netherlands Marine Corps, it is our great pleasure, yes, hello up there, uh, all the way from Holland, thank you for coming, uh, it's our great pleasure to welcome their drummers to the sound of the march, Qua Partit Orbis, as far as the world extends. Our theme of nautical travel then continues with the combined band and drum feature Shiver Timpanis from Two Steps From Hell before the sequence concludes with another new march composed by band colour sergeant Dan Page to commemorate the naval battle of North Cape in 1943 and the 85th anniversary of the commissioning of HMS Belfast. So, lots to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I have already alluded to the fact that it's a very special concert tonight. Uh, responsible for producing it, and indeed the last four festivals, composing and arranging much of the original music, and a frequent soloist on this stage, to conduct the march sequence on this, his 30th and last MFM before leaving the service, please give a very warm welcome to core bandmaster Ivan Hutchinson.
and a special round of applause for core band master Ivan Hutchinson. The core of drums, just thrilling always, aren't they? Absolutely brilliant. Now, this year marks the 70th anniversary of the end of the Korean War. So, composed for this Mountbatten Festival by band sergeant Craig Sanders, the Forgotten War is our tribute to those who fought and those who were lost. To conduct this and the remainder of the first half, please welcome the Royal Marines Band Service Adjutant, Major Tom Crane.
extremely powerful piece. Thank you for that. Now, it's time to introduce you to some of our outstanding soloists and back by popular demand, an item featuring the percussionists who recently unearthed a lost manuscript from the composer Vittorio Monti, who famously wrote the piece Chardas. Now, it was a solo xylophone piece that has now been reworked as a duet so that we can feature not one, but two of the band's most accomplished xylophonists. And this is the premiere performance and... Uh, they are honored to be performing together. Now, some of you have been here before and you will know that the percussion features have, how can I put this politely, been something of a slapstick affair in the past. And so I have to say, it's quite exciting to be introducing them doing something quite serious. Um, so I hope you enjoy it, performing Bohemian Sketches, band Lance Corporal James Stammers and musician George Prentice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry. I've just been backstage. Um, we do have a slight problem. Uh, one of our xylophonists is missing. Can't find George. Don't know where he is. Um, seriously, I have been told we may have to skip this summer. Well, I'm sorry, James. <laughs> no. I could perform the piece as a solo. You, you do know it is meant to be a duet. Yeah? Yes. You're happy with that? OK, boss, if you're happy. OK. Well, over to James, ladies and gentlemen.
You know that feeling when you realise you've been the victim of a massively elaborate wind-up? <laughs> That's me right now. Um, I will forgive them, the lads. They were phenomenal, weren't they? Absolutely amazing. Thank you, James. Thank you, George. That came from the mind of musician Johnny King, and there was music by band colour sergeant Nick West. Thank you to them. But... Before we close this half, I just want you to know that during the interval, of course there are opportunities to shop, of course there are. Many mobile merchandise sellers are wandering around to tempt you with merch. Also, I'd like you to buy flags, please, to wave in the finale. I love a flag, so please do get involved. There's also a shop at door six as well, I've been told to tell you. So, uh, before that, though, we've got a great a great medley for you now. We're going to celebrate the music of an artist whose appeal transcends the generations with a new arrangement that features on trumpet, band sergeant Steve Sarley, on trombone, band corporal Fraser Wilkes, we've got vocalist band corporal Sam McIndo, we've got band lance corporals Hannah Smither and Kirsty Chatterton. The arrangement is by Captain Trev Norton and you are going to hear the hits of Stevie Wonder. So... Let us see you dancing, please, ladies and gentlemen. I did not just shoulders, not just sitting down dancing. I want to see you in the aisles as we groove towards the interval. This is Wonderland. Thank you. 
But some don't know how to handle it. Always reaching out in vain, accepting the things not worth having. Don't you worry.
There's no shame in asking for help. Once a Royal Marine, always a Royal Marine. If you need help, ask for it. Welcome back, and hello to the golden age of Hollywood and the Ocean Air's big band. Conducting this part of the concert, Captain Phil Trudgeon. Ray for Hollywood, absolutely welcome back everyone. Weren't they fantastic? The Ocean Airs. <laughs> now, the, the original Ocean Airs were established in the 1940s, right at the height of the big band era. They featured in the Royal Tournament. You may have seen that old film from 1958, Indiscreet. Well, that was them too. And recognising that big band music is still so phenomenally popular, this fine incarnation uh, was reformed last year, and we're very pleased that they did. Led by Captain Phil Trudgeon, uh, the Oceanaires opened the second half with Hooray for Hollywood. Phil's got family in tonight. Uh, they're now going to continue with Strike Up the Band appropriately enough. And then they'll take romance, uh, featuring band lance corporal Hannah Smither, and then they'll conclude with a great arrangement of Kenneth Alford's well-known march, Colonel Bogey. So, Captain Phil, strike up the band.
Arctic romance Well, my heart is young and eager to fly I'll give my heart a try I'll take my man I'll take romance Well, my arms are strong and eager for you I'll give my arms that cue I'll take romance So, my lover, when you are
the Ocean Airs. Weren't they fabulous? If you love that, I've got a shameless plug for you now. They're going to be playing at Lee's Cliff Hall in Folkestone on October the 14th, and they would love to see you there. So put that in your diaries. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're regular visitors to the Mountbatten Festival of Music, then you will have noticed, perhaps, that this year we are benefiting even more people. For the first time, proceeds from the event will be shared between RMA, the Royal Marines Charity, and the Royal Navy and Royal Marines Charity, along with Young Lives versus Cancer, which was formerly Click Sergeant. Now, during the 50-year festival's history, uh, it has definitely directly benefited thousands and thousands of Royal Marines and their families, whilst also helping to support young people battling cancer. The support to those two charities will, of course, remain, but now proceeds from this event will go to the benefit of the wider naval family. For the next three years, RMA, the Royal Marines Charity, is partnering with the Royal Navy and Royal Marines Charity with the common goal in wanting to deliver lifelong health and well-being support to the whole core family. So, over the last few months, they've been sharing knowledge, they've been sharing experience, they have support networks, helping service leavers and their families who maybe are vulnerable or facing big challenges as they transition to civilian life. And now, because they're working together, the two charities, they make sure leavers really do get the right help and know that their Navy and Royal Marines family are always there for them. But they need your help. Of course they do. And uh, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to help them tonight. Now, for this part, I've got a glamorous assistant. Hello, Colonel Jace. Hello, Katie. Special night for you tonight. Are you having a good time? I'm having the best time. This is fantastic. I can't believe this is my job. Now, we have got messages on the screen which are going to tell you how to text to donate. There we are. And uh, Colonel Jace is going to tell us how, just how easy it is. <laughs> Apparently, you're going to give money right now on your phone. Now, listen, I normally stand in front of these concerts, ladies and gentlemen, and I tell people to turn their phones off. But right now, I'd like you to delve into your handbags, into your pockets, and get your phones out, switch them on, and text to donate. Just doing this last year raised over £15,000, and there's lots of you here tonight, so I'd like to do better than that, please. Um, so if you can do as Colonel Jay says, or are you just messaging somebody there? I've just had a phone call. It's okay. <laughs> just, um, 70470, MFM10, donates £10. Done. Excellent. So that's a tenner. Um, I would like to hold up your phones if you've done it, please. I'd like to see lots of twinkling lights around the hall. There they come. Excellent. You see, I knew I could rely on you. Always ask them after the interval. <laughs> as long as they're doing this, they're told. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. And please do give as much as you can. It's for such a fantastic cause. And we have lots of people from the charities here tonight. So thank you for your good work if you're here to enjoy the concert. Now, thank you, Colonel Jace. Time to feature some more of our talented soloists. Uh, it had occurred to the team, it had been some time since you've had a euphonium solo. Got to put that right. So, we've got a piece now, originally composed for brass band by the cornet player George Swift, and we are going to uh, have a virtuosic piece which he wrote for his wife. Now, this is called Elfrida. Please give a very warm welcome to our soloist, band corporal, Matthew Fletcher.
extraordinary playing there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next soloist is hugely popular, an inspirational musician who I know many of you have enjoyed watching perform over his long career, nearly 40 years in the band service. He is retiring next week, so this is actually his very last performance with the Royal Marines bands. I think you know who it might be. Lots of you requested this particular solo, so it gives me great pleasure to welcome, to play against all odds, band colour sergeant, Gordon Carter.
what a fantastic final gig for such a fabulous musician. And there's a, quite a few tears backstage, I'm just telling you now. But if you thought that was emotional, well, just you wait, because I'm going to welcome some very special guests now to the Albert Hall stage. The Royal Marines Band Service has been so thrilled that last year they joined forces with a really special group of people. The Music Man Project, which is an award-winning education programme and performance programme for people with learning disabilities. Now, they're going to perform a song for you called Music is Magic. It was written by David Stanley, who's the force of nature behind the Music Man Project, and he's playing the piano tonight. It's been arranged by Lieutenant Hannah Trudgeon, and it is all about how, well, how music can connect to everyone, and it's about happiness and enjoyment, and I think you're going to absolutely love it. Before we hear it, I just want to make another little announcement, because, of course, to conduct the Mass Bands and the Music Man Project, I'm going to welcome back the Principal Director of Music, Royal Marines. But before we do, I just want to tell you a little, a little story, because having joined as a young musician at the tender age of 16 and uh, following a career of some 38 years, this will be the last MFM for Colonel Jace, who retires later this year. They're all going, aren't they? What are we going to do without them? Now, once coined the Mad Major, uh, <laughs> until, as he said, someone was mad enough to promote him, um, he's led the RMBS through some extraordinary times Times, and so please give him a huge welcome. This is Lieutenant Colonel Jace Bircham.
I'm more or less holding it together. I thought that was absolutely tremendous. I don't think anybody on this stage or in this hall will forget that performance. And I think we'd all agree we could all do with a bit more of that in the world at the moment. Well, the finale for tonight's Mountbatten Festival will pay tribute to the longest-serving monarch in our nation's history, Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. With music composed and arranged by the core bandmaster and video produced by band sergeant James Dunlop, a life of dedication reflects on the story of this truly remarkable sovereign, her unfaltering dedication to Britain and the Commonwealth, and her enduring relationship with the senior service. On the 19th of September 2022, the nation fell silent as we paid our final respects during the state funeral of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. As Head of State, the Commonwealth and Commander-in-Chief of the British Armed Forces, she served the nation for over 70 years. The admiration she held for her armed forces was a common thread throughout her truly remarkable life. A life of dedication. The young princess was born on the 21st of April 1926 at 17 Bruton Street in Mayfair. The first child of Prince Albert, Duke of York, and his wife Elizabeth, Duchess of York, she was born into a naval family. Her father served before and during the Great War, including at the Battle of Jutland on the battleship HMS Collingwood. In December 1936, after the abdication of her uncle, King Edward VIII, her quiet family life came to an end. Her father acceded to the throne as King George VI, and from then on, the young princess was the first in line to the throne. In 1937, she joined her parents aboard the old Royal Yacht Victoria and Albert at the Coronation Fleet Review, the first of many such gatherings of naval might she would attend over the next 75 years. A few years later, she was hosted by young Prince Philip Mountbatten, while the King and Queen visited Britannia Royal Naval College in Dartmouth. During the war years, the young princess spent most of her time at Windsor Castle, continuing with her education, studying art and music, and learning to ride horses. She also continued her royal duties by giving her first radio broadcast during the BBC's Children's Hour. In wishing you all good evening, I feel that I am speaking to friends and companions who have shared with my sister and myself many a happy children's hour. Thousands of you in this country have had to leave your homes and be separated from your fathers and mothers. We are trying to do all we can to help our gallant sailors, soldiers and airmen. And we are trying too 
to bear our own share of the danger and sadness of war. My sister is by my side, and we are both going to say good night to you. Come on, Margaret. Good night, children. Good night, and good luck to you all. The Queen's relationship with the armed forces really began in 1945, when, as Princess Elizabeth, she joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service, becoming the first female member of the royal family to join the armed services as a full-time member. During her time in the ATS, the Princess learned to drive and maintain vehicles, and from that point on, the Queen maintained a very close relationship through regular visits to naval establishments and ships, and she held many military appointments and honorary ranks throughout her lifetime. In July 1947, the engagement of Lieutenant Philip Mountbatten to Princess Elizabeth was announced and the marriage took place in Westminster Abbey on the 20th of November of that year. Shortly before the wedding, the bridegroom was given the title of Duke of Edinburgh and appointed Knight of the Garter by King George VI. After their marriage, the young couple spent their honeymoon at Broadlands in Hampshire and at Burkhall in Balmoral. They were able to live a relatively private life, with the Duke pursuing his naval career whilst the Princess cared for a young Prince Charles. From 1949 to 1951, she was a royal princess, naval wife and mother, living in Malta while Prince Philip was serving with the Mediterranean fleet as first lieutenant of HMS Chequers and then in command of HMS Magpie. Malta was said to hold very fond memories for the couple, who looked back on their carefree time there fondly later in life. On February the 6th, 1952, she received the news of her father's death and her own accession to the throne whilst on an official visit to Kenya. The new queen and the Duke of Edinburgh immediately flew back to Britain, returning to Clarence House, where the royal standard was flown for the first time in her reign. The coronation took place in Westminster Abbey on the 2nd of June, 1953, and the ceremony was broadcast on radio around the world, and at the Queen's request, on television for the very first time. An estimated 27 million people in Britain watched the ceremony as the Archbishop of Canterbury anointed Her Majesty.
As head of the Commonwealth, the Queen played an important role in reinforcing the links that joined people together across the globe. She made more than 200 visits to Commonwealth countries, spanning many regions, religions and cultures, with her first official visit being to South Africa in 1947 as Princess Elizabeth. During her reign, the Commonwealth grew from just seven nations to 56, representing two and a half billion people. Her royal duties included meeting Queen Salote of Tonga in 1953, the opening of the Sydney Opera House in 1973. She attended 22 Commonwealth heads of government, seven Commonwealth Games, and since 1977, Commonwealth Day has been celebrated throughout the Commonwealth almost every year of her reign. Although Her Majesty travelled extensively to many countries across the globe, she still managed to support her armed forces, especially the Royal Navy. Few people launched more ships than Her Majesty. Her first, at just 18 years old, was the mighty battleship HMS Vanguard. In the seven decades that followed, no year went by without Her Majesty being involved with the senior service. Launchings, commissionings, official openings and visits to ships and units all demonstrated the admiration she held for the Royal Navy. Of the numerous vessels she sponsored since launching HMS Vanguard, only two remain in service today. HMS Lancaster, the Queen's frigate, and the aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth. A home away from home, her beloved royal yacht Britannia served the royal family for over 44 years. Hosting state visits, royal honeymoons, banquets and family holidays, Britannia was a majestic symbol of the Commonwealth and a proud ambassador of the United Kingdom. Amongst the 220 crew, a Royal Marines band was aboard to entertain during the official visits, providing dinner music and beating retreats. Decommissioned in 1997, it was clear how much this ship meant to Her Majesty and to the rest of the royal family. Throughout the Queen's life, there have been times of loss and reflection. The Aberfan mining disaster in 1966, the London bomb attacks in 1982 and 2005, the fire at Windsor Castle in 1992, the death of Princess Diana in 1997, the death of her sister Margaret and the Queen Mother in 2002, and of course, the death of her beloved Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, in 2021. But despite those sadder times, Her Majesty's duty to her people and the nation never wavered. Majesty celebrated many jubilees over the years, but in 2022 we celebrated her Platinum Jubilee. She was the first British monarch to reach such a milestone. Events took place around the world to mark this occasion, with London becoming the centre of celebrations. A spectacular concert at Buckingham Palace and a pageant parade down the Mall concluded a weekend of events that reinforced the Sovereign's role as a force for unity and national identity. It was announced at 6.30pm on the 8th of September 2022 
that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II had passed away peacefully at Balmoral Castle at the age of 96. The state funeral took place on the 19th of September and was attended by 2,000 people, including 500 heads of state and foreign dignitaries. Around 6,000 armed forces personnel took part and an estimated one million people lined the streets. The Royal Navy played an important role with 96 Royal Navy sailors having the honor of pulling the state gun carriage during the procession through the streets of London. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II was the fabric that held a nation together. She ruled for longer than any other monarch in British history, becoming a much-loved and respected figure around the world. She fulfilled her promise, devoting her whole life to the service of her people and our great nation. As we look back at her remarkable life of dedication, we give thanks for the duty she's given as we start a new journey and future under the reign of King Charles III. Gentlemen, I am afraid the concert is very nearly over, but not quite. Do not despair. We have still got the uplifting Britannic salute featuring the Mountbatten Festival of Music Choir. Who are they, I hear you cry? Well, that's you, ladies and gentlemen, and I expect a good roof-raising chorus, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, Land of Hope and Glory, Rule Britannia. I'd really like us to rival the last night of the proms, and as it's Colonel Jace's last night, I think we really ought to do him proud, don't you? Yeah. Before that, we've got Sunset, set to the naval hymn Eternal Father by former corps bandmaster Michael McDermott. And this year, we're going to feature another very special guest reciting his own poem. Jacob Mason reflects poignantly on life as the child of a serving Royal Naval submariner. This is normal for me, is a powerful reminder of the personal sacrifices made by our service personnel and their families. Jacob. This is normal for me, but some people don't know how it feels. It can get rough sometimes. Children tease because I'm different. 
Dad is not there. I watch the sea for him. I stand still and stare. This is normal for me. But it might be different if you stayed around a lot. Christmas, birthdays, holidays, New Year's since we've been apart. Missing someone so much I have no words for being so sad. Separation and silence. This is normal for me, counting days until you are gone. No mark on the calendar to count down your return. You had to leave me in hospital. I knew you had to go. You do such a good job, and you were hurting too. I know. This is normal for me. It would help if you knew how it feels. To feel special, to be part of my family and community. Every time I see you, I'm filled with such joy. You're important to me. You're important to everybody, our country. I still watch the sea. This is normal for me.
can I say. That was really excellent. Thank you for that. And on behalf of all of us, can I just thank you again for supporting this year's Mountbatten Festival. Don't forget, if you would like to see more and hear more from the bands of His Majesty's Royal Marines, you can go to the Facebook page, you can go to the YouTube channel, I believe you can follow them on Twitter, all the socials, it's all out there for you. Check your programmes for the concert tour dates and venues in September, another great opportunity to see the massed bands in action. And we will be back here next year on the 8th and 9th of March for the 2024 Mountbatten Festival of Music. I hope we'll see you all here again then. Now, as you leave the hall, you're always very generous. I know this. Uh, you'll see the Royal Marines Charity Collectors. We make it very easy for you to part with your money. You can just tap to donate. Uh, I think last year you, you raised something like 23,000 pounds that way. So let's see if we can beat that this year. And you're doing so much for these wonderful charities, so thank you. But now we're going to finish with the march past of the Royal Navy, Heart of Oak. The march past of the Royal Netherlands Navy, De Filimas de Koninklijke Marina. And of course, the regimental march of His Majesty's Royal Marines, A Life on the Ocean Wave. All serving and former serving are encouraged to stand for their respective march. You may well spot an old oppo, get involved. We love to see you on your feet. A final thank you to Colonel Jace. What a great contribution he has made to the music of the Royal Marines Bands. On behalf of him, on behalf of his fellow conductors, from the mass bands of His Majesty's Royal Marines, from our guests, from me, thank you once again. Safe journey home. Have a very good night. Goodbye.